Tour de Provence, stage three was an absolute cracker up to Mont Blanc too. Obviously, it didn't finish at the very top, but Chalet Renard, but a half an hour climb. So a very good indication of how the pros are doing so far in February. So as you can see here, here are the results. Ivan Sosa did a stunning ride, attacked with like 4K to go, uh, put a big gap into everyone and then held it to the line. Uh, behind them, there was like Bernal and Alaphilippe. Bernal just sat on Alaphilippe. It was quite, a, quite an interesting race, a lot of attacking. Um, I, I quite enjoyed it. Ride of the day, I think, goes to Carlos Rodriguez. Uh, he finished 18th on the day, but had a really, really strong pace and basically dropped the whole field. He dropped Lawrence de Plus, everyone. Uh, but anyway, you can see here, obviously, we, we all know what you've come for, which is the power data. And um, Jack Haig has delivered. So he was 48 seconds back. So quite significant, I think, in some ways. Like, it's a decent time gap. But at the same time, you can still see the sort of numbers that were required. So... First of all, we'll just, just go through his whole power file. Um, so overall, uh, a decently hard day out, but nothing too crazy um, before the climb, at least. Uh, 323 normalized, pretty pretty standard. Um, 36K an hour, you know, 2,800 meters. It's not a crazy long stage, four and a half hours. It's basically like four, four hours and then max 30 minute test. So pretty good to see what sort of condition everyone's in, uh, especially, I guess, a couple stages in. So you can see these early climbs. Really not done too hard, to be honest. Uh, you can see here, 4.6 watts per kilo. So, yeah, pretty chill for them, let's be honest. Uh, so, zone three, zo like low zone three for them. Uh, probably more like zone two, if anything. Um, and then again here, like 330 watts, like 4.7 watts per kilo. Again, n no no bother for anyone. Um, but if we if we look at the, the last climb, you know, it's half an hour here. So, if we just look at the kilojoules, it's always interesting to do this. And you might say, oh, Charlie, why do you actually look at the kilojoules? I just want to see the numbers. And I think the reason you've got to contextualize the numbers um, in terms of the fact that, you know, he's just burnt three and a half thousand kilojoules close enough. Um, and obviously that has a cost and it's interesting. I mean, cycling is an endurance sport. It's not like a, you know, just 20 minute max test, for instance. It's um, what you can do at the end of the day. So obviously uh, 290 watts is pretty, pretty hard, normalized, but but not, not crazy to be honest, harder than you expect maybe. Uh, but anyway, so before that, three and a half thousand kilojoules, and this is the number, 6.4 watts per kilo for 30 minutes, which I think is really, really high. I think maybe power meter or weight is could be 6.3, 6.2. Um, so as a comparison, Nari Quintana was, did this a minute quicker than Sosa, so about two minutes quicker, and everyone said he did six and a half last year. So, you know, it's hard to compare. The wind apparently wasn't very windy, but it was quite foggy. Didn't look as good conditions in terms of just like, uh, air resistance, that stuff. You might say air resistance, but 20k an hour, bit of air resistance, uh, or 19k an hour. Um, but obviously, we can see it, you can see when it starts to the the very beginning part was done at a pretty mental pace, 6.4 watts per kilo, just whack it on the front, and then it was just sort of more who could hang on. Uh, I mean, Jack Haig didn't really go much below. I mean, you can see here it's like maybe 10 watts lower, but he, I mean, everyone knows the numbers they can do. Like when Sosa attacked, it wasn't like everyone was like, I can't respond. Everyone's like, well, I could respond but I would blow up because I've just been on my limit. Well, obviously that's the thing with Sosa. He was like able to ride at the limit, attack over, get the gap and then keep going. Uh, once he got the gap, I mean, it was like 20 seconds. That was it. He got the 20 second gap and then just maintained it. Um, so obviously that's the thing with these races, it's acceleration to get the 20 second gap. And then after that, it's just the same. Uh, so anyway, this last four minutes again was still 6.4 watts per kilo. So pretty strong. But if we look on the on the day here, you might say, well, uh, Warren Bargui, uh said, it says he does 400 watts. Apparently that's wrong. He says it overestimated on his power file. Um, but it would put him at 6.3, which doesn't sound too crazy. So it's maybe it's more like 6.1 for him. Uh, but the other lad who did really well was Matteo Jorgensen. Uh, you can see he, he finished in 12th position, 1 minute 18 uh, back. So, you know, 30 seconds off, off Jack Haig. And he did 440 watts. Again, 6.3 watts per kilo. So again, I think maybe the, the power meters, you know, could... Un could read differently this might be a bit high but the point is you can see you need stupid numbers to be able to compete at world uh, well it's not world tour level but you know what i mean like with world tour climbers like basically three days into the stage three days into the race sorry three and a half thousand kilojoules and you just got a whack like 6.3 minimum to get a top 10 probably 6.2 6.3 to get a top 10 now nah, that's that's pretty high level and in my opinion the level recently has definitely gone got a step up because i think in the past you would have been able to do six and probably get away with a top 10 easy and 6.2 would be like wow um but now it seems like everyone's just doing stupid numbers all year round um but pretty exciting um so yeah those are my i guess analysis of the day 
Uh, ben O'Connor, not a great day. You only, you know, still, this thing is like he finishes, you know, two minutes back or whatever on so so, but still 400 watts. I mean, it's like, man, the, the level you have to be at um, these days to compete is just absolutely crazy. Um, and it really is, yeah, super different to what it what it used to be. Um, Mark Donovan, not a great day out, but still 354 watts. He only weighs like 65 gears. It's like 5.8 um, and lost a lot of time. Uh, so there we go. Cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this short little video on uh, the uh, on uh, toilet performance. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more race footage soon. Um, and we've got a couple of stuff coming on about my TT bike and the uh, development in numbers, hopefully. <laughs>